Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerdlings of all ages, welcome officially to Remastered Erangel. Look at this beautiful scenery. The entire map has been redone from bottom to top, and we're going to be playing in collaboration with PUBG Reddit some very exciting custom games today. Oh, so I hope you guys yeah. are going to enjoy the matches. I certainly will. Thank you very much for the new follow. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce WNSTJD, but I appreciate it. Game number one is going to be a King of the Hill map. Oh, and I yeah. suspect a lot of people won't know what that means. Listen very carefully. You need to read these instructions or you will end up dying. There is only one blue zone phase. You can see these rules on the top left of your screen. You know what the final circle location is going to be from the very start of the game. And it takes 10 minutes for the circle to start shrinking. However... You can never go into the blue. If you go into the blue, you die within one second. Do not go into the blue zone. That is my only recommendation. So here we are on the plane by the looks of things to start things off. Getting a quick look at remastered Stalba here as well. Oh, absolutely delightful. Some of these uh, textures are beautiful. Grass is also significantly nicer compared to before as well. And as you guys can see... Really, really nice stuff coming out here. So the plane path, let's go ahead and check out uh, where we are landing. The plane path was very, very southerly here. Uh, it's it's going to be a really interesting. It's 8 o'clock to 3 o'clock in terms of position. And that means that a lot of people are going to be focused, unfortunately, on a very, very small area of the map. Uh, that's extremely frustrating for us wanting to explore the map and be able to see every single possible part. But... Maybe we'll take a look, first of all, at, uh, at where we get to in military base. So here we are, following one of our teams. I can't quite... There we go. There's the team number. So team 25. Uh, a lot of random names by the looks of things. Although 1, 2, 3 does seem, to be, uh, does seem to be a theme here. And there are at least two teams. No, three teams, pardon me, that have landed in military base. We have teams 4, 25, and 19. Some of that uh, excellent detail in the brickwork next to factory there. Absolutely beautiful. We're getting into our first fight. Team 25 sneaking up. Managing to get a down onto evil from Team 4. Trading the kill out. Team 25 seem to have a command of this factory building. We're also getting a teammate revived. Team 4 are here, but they're very spread out at the moment. And we also have team number 13 in the C compounds. We're watching Captain Ghost from Team 19, who is actually a solo. So we're being very brave and already getting shot at as well. He's going to be on top of the scaffolding, kind of chilling at the moment. Our first team already eliminated in 25th place. That's Team 18. And uh, that's Team 11 taking them out. I believe that's uh, Wuz and Doge, I can see. I think Clover is on that team as well. So some of the PUBG Reddit regulars. If you guys are looking to join the games, you need to join the PUBG Reddit Discord server. So if you head uh, to discord.gg forward slash PUBG Reddit, you will be able to hit the button that says opt in to custom games. And that is where all the passwords are being posted. So if you want in for the next game, please do that. And you'll get the password five minutes before everybody else. At which point, of course, the, uh, the games do become public. Uh, the password might not work at the moment because the stream is on a five minute delay and the game has started, but the password will work again when the next game is announced. And I'll, of course, let you know on stream as well. So this is just game number one of five that we're playing today. Uh, and we see this literally every texture, I think, has been thought out and redone on this absolutely beautiful remastered Erangel map. It looks like that solo player on top of scaffolding has been taken down by Team 25 as well. They have a reasonable grasp of military base now. Teams 4 and 13 are busy fighting with each other in C-suite compounds. And uh, it doesn't look like they're going to pose a massive threat to Team 25. As long as Team 25 don't walk in one at a time. That could end up getting slightly awkward for them. Alright, so this is military base. Look, look at... Well, actually, let's go follow someone else and take a look at some of the hill sceneries elsewhere. Ah, uh, that's not a good idea! Wait, he didn't die? He went down to like 5 HP. Unbelievable. 
imagine if he didn't land on the fence, he landed on the ground instead. That would have been an instant death. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, some alternative scenery so we can show off some of the beautiful surroundings on Remastered Erangel. We're just going to let those load in. And we are here east of Quarry at the moment, where several teams, they're not fighting right now, but they are in close proximity. Uh, team 4, yeah, Team 4 and 13 uh, go down to Team 25 in military base in the meantime. That is all fine. And we're watching Team 9 in these compounds just south of Quarry. The detail on the grass now, by the way, is absolutely superb. Um, it, it's nice that it's uh, it, it's patchy. It doesn't feel like it's a repetitive texture. It, it looks so good. And the insides of these buildings, I mean, are just absolutely astounding now. Obviously, to people who are taking the game super seriously, it's like, I don't care if they're blocks or if they're super real. I just want to get my headshots. However, looking good while doing it is an important part of the game. This, is, interestingly, is a duo. Team 3, Femi and Hemi. That's what I'm going to call them. Rhyming names are important in this game. I don't actually know where his teammate is, Hemi. But, uh, ooh! Alright, we have to talk about King of the Hill, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my god, this is disgusting. Okay, so... You see there's a circle on the map and it's phase one and you also see a 10 minute countdown timer. This is the location of the final circle. It is on observatory on Military Island. Everybody must make their way here. When that 10 minute countdown on your screen reaches zero, the zone starts moving in. And if you walk out into the blue zone, you die instantly. That is extremely important to understand. That is the reason why this custom game mode exists. It's called King of the Hill, and we are ending on a hill, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be the observatory on Military Island. Extremely exciting times. I don't remember the last time um, King of the Hill ended on, like, a proper high point on the map, like something like Everest, but this is absolutely delightful. M249, for anyone who cares to pick that up. Not even 100% certain. Okay, so we're just near shelter here. I was about to say, I'm not sure where we are on the map anymore because it all looks so pretty. And this is the garage building near sort of uh, shelter and lumberyard. So the circle has popped. Now, an interesting byproduct. Oh, I love the grass on the middle of the road there, by the way. Just a, a nice little touch by the PUBG team. But um, an interesting point to note for anyone playing this zone for the first time. Crates are on. And after the first crate, the final circle has been revealed. Now, if the final circle's been revealed, guys, crates always appear in the circle. So if you get to the zone really early on, there's a good chance you can get two, potentially three crates. So that's the advantage of what... Oh, yeah. MSC Bombs, thank you very much for the follow. Uh, AFTV Kisser, Kaiser... We're going to have to have a couple of conversations. Uh, a team kill there onto Jamie to start things off. Not exactly ideal. Oh, they're just driving past him as well. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I hope another team comes by. And, uh, oh my. Well, that's two people down now. That's awkward. I have no idea what's going on here. Never mind. Um, but yeah, getting getting the observatory... And also, uh, and also getting the crates early on can end up being extremely beneficial. So we've got 55 people left alive. Still 22 teams. And uh, these guys are near Team 6. Hulk and Jake Skywalker, by the looks of things, are very close by. Team 14 getting into a little bit of a tussle with them. Because it is going to go down once more. And uh, that is Team 24 eliminated, unfortunately. Frodo Shaggin. <laughs> is going to finish him off there. All right. Oh, just a couple of hiccups on the observation there, but hopefully we're back into the game now and all is well. This is Team 1. I believe they are still quite far away, to be honest, from military base. Uh, sorry, from the, uh, from the circle, but uh, near-ish military base now. You can see the flagpoles and the moss creeping up the side of the buildings and all... Uh, of these beautiful visual improvements that the game have made. Teams 13 and 25 see each other. That is Pip onto Das. Team 25 have three people here. And Pip Shroud is only one person. But, you know, Pip Shroud is Pip Shroud. So maybe we'll see a super sexy 1v3 here. 
But it looks like Das and Min Jae are actually going to be the last two people over here. No one in the circle just yet. This is a combination of people not understanding what King of the Hill is. Uh, and they will find out once they start dying en masse to the blue zone. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, maybe them just wanting a little bit more time to loot. It's still five minutes until the circle starts moving in. And remember, it takes 15 minutes to get there. So we will see, I'd say in about 10 minutes time, a whole bunch of mass deaths from people who did not read the rules and have ventured out into the blue zone. So if anyone wanting to play custom games regularly as well, you can join the exact same... Why have we got a team kill with a punch? I am not... I don't know. I actually don't know. Uh, <laughs> we, we host custom games two or three times a week on the PUBG Reddit Discord. Uh, I help cast sometimes uh, in these games as well, and they generally are quite a lot of fun. There are loads of different game modes... Uh, that we play and we sometimes play regular games as well we will be playing a few of those today but our first three games today will be custom game modes and we're starting with king of the hill so if you guys fancy joining in in the chat on the on the stream say hello and also if you want to join into a custom games on a more regular basis make sure you check out the uh the custom games discord as well A little bit of a close call on the back of a buggy driving past the fence in a military base. And this is Team 25 trying to escape and get closer to the observatory. That is a very, very sensible idea. They're going to be splitting and grabbing both of those vehicles and potentially moving towards observatory. Team 14 and 21 are both very, very close. And uh, Amadez. He's got three kills already to his name. And he's on the outskirts of uh, observatory already. But he is the only player here. His teammate, unfortunately, isn't anywhere to be seen. And Squad 14 have multiple people moving up towards that plane already. So potential danger town here. We can see Squad 21, the first team inside this zone. And he's well kitted out. He's got three kills to his name. We can see the extended mag on red dot on that M4, I believe. He's sporting a silencer on that as well. And he has a silenced M24. What an absolute beast. Amadez is going to be the first player to capture the hill. But now the question is, will he be able to stay there? Squad 14, relatively hot on his heels. They're going to be coming on foot up the mountain as well. And I believe there's a third member... Of squad 14 in Novo. Squad 11 in the background are also in Novo. Just kind of chilling out. Squad 20 wiped by squad 8. And that is just... Oh, that is just to the north of bridge as well. So a little bit of bridge camping. A little bit of a vehicle blowing up happening there. And our first two squads are now inside the circle. Team 25, they're rotating out of military base and also making their way in. They've now swapped vehicles twice. They've gone for the buggy, they've then swapped out for the Dasha, and now they are in the UAS. And here comes the next drop. So this is, of course, a massive bonus to people who are in the circle early on. And Amadez might need it because he's going to come up against 1v2, 1v3 battles very soon. Let's go ahead and see what's inside that crate and what Amadez can expect to grab here. Uh, has he actually... Has he got it just yet? Where's the crate? Where is the crate? How have we lost the crate? There we go. Oh, the crate's on the other side. Okay, he's not going to be worrying about that for too much. Ha what is in there at the moment? It's another M249. Okay. So Amadez uh, will be looking for it very, very soon. However, I think Squad 14 are actually going to beat him to it because Amadez is trying to gatekeep Squad 25, who are on the north side of the circle. The problem is Squad 14 are coming up behind him. Mytle D right here. He's going to be swapping out his barrel for an M249 very soon, I'm sure. Min J goes down. Amadez effectively in a 1v1 situation right now. Daz team... Kills and finishes this teammate? Question mark. Amadez finishes them off anyway. Team 21, still very much the king of the hill. But squad 14 have two people on the crate and another one coming in. Amadez with five kills to his name. 
and squad 14 now on the perimeter of the circle. 57 seconds now, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Frodo Shagan, very close to Amadez. Hang on just a second. Oh no, and that is gonna be the end of Amadez's teammates are nowhere close. So he is not gonna be able to get revived at all. And uh, that is that. Teammate also going down elsewhere, which means Team 21 are down to three people, but I don't actually know exactly where. Was Escaping Kid, Doge, and Clover approaching Squad 22 now as they come onto the edge of the circle in about 20 seconds' time. We're going to start seeing the one and only blue zone this game start moving down for given getting a very quick knock onto clover with the mutant i think from across the road there but i can't be 100 percent sure clover taking refuge behind a shack the rest of the team oh clover going down so low there's only about 10 more seconds for someone to revive her otherwise she is going to be out of the game and unfortunately i don't think the team can get to her on time was is trying to rush in but won't make it in time clover goes down team 11 uh sorry team 10 even Go down... Oh, no, it is Team 11. Go down to three players. Forgiven. It's taken down now, so traded out by Wizard Hat with a VSS from range. Brutal couple of shots. Don't know where the rest of Team 23 are, but Team 22 from up top have now heard the gunshots and have decided this is a good time to push on in. Escaping Kid, a.k.a. Gab. Not much cover for him there, unfortunately. Was trying to do what he can. Beautiful headshots, actually, initially onto Z4R on Team 22. Managing to get him down on the top of that hill. And now Team 3, we were following them at the start of the game. They're just rushing in on a bike. They're going to be fighting against Team 14 at the top. Team 11 manages to finish off Team 22, and that allows them safe passage into the rest of the circle. They have lost one of their members at least permanently. Clover will not be playing any further part in this game. This is a bold move because there are a lot of people up the top here. Hemi goes down and Femi's going to be joining him. And that is that for these guys. The blue zone has now started continuing. Let's take a quick look at the map and show you guys what's going on here. Uh, Pippi Shroud on his own. He'll probably pop up by Team Voice. So you see that blue zone, ladies and gentlemen, on the edge of your screen. If you walk into that blue zone, you die immediately. That is the rule in this game. We are 25 people left alive, now 24, and down to 10 teams, and we are all focused on getting to this circle here. You are watching Custom Games. This is the beautiful remastered Erangle map. Uh, we are playtesting it. We are enjoying some free games with the community. I'm very happy to be able to bring you these maps a day or two early, and it gives me great pleasure to say PUBG Reddit are helping out with organizing these games and getting everyone in and out of these lobbies. We have five games for you today, or well, up to five games. The first three games are going to be fun custom game modes. And the last two games are going to be a third person and first person regular game with squad sizes of four. Pippi Shroud spotting team 14, getting two hits, but that's about it. And because he's a solo, uh, having to duck, Duke and Jive his way out of there very, very quickly indeed. Do not blame him. Squad 14, remember, have three people uh, on the observatory and they've also got a crate. The M249 from Mital D can do some rather significant damage. They've got six kills to their name so far, and they currently hold the circle. Starting to thin out the herd now. Lulu and Calypso. Chilling out and attempting to evade fire from Raider, but that's not going to do them much good at the moment. Raider with the two times on the M24, not finding a connection, but he definitely has a big, well, big boy gun uh, to fend off this duo. See how it ends up happening. Still just the one blue zone in 11 minutes and 45 seconds. Only this zone will be in the game. Remember, the blue zone only shrinks once in this game mode. First person, king of the hill. Here comes team 11. Up towards team 14. They get spotted very early on. This is not a good position for them. They might have to go back down, reconsider, and rotate around. I don't think pushing up from this angle is necessarily going to benefit them. Some underhand grenades. Not going to quite get there in time. But I don't think these guys should be attempting to push up here. At all. 
I think it's going to be extremely dangerous. Mytle D coming around with the M249. He's going to play spoiler, and this is what happens. Escaping Kid going down to Frodo Shagan in an absolutely beautiful frag grenade, I have to say. Here comes Mytle D getting very close, though. The other, the other squad member should be able to see him right now. Doge goes down. Wizard Hat, the only member left alive right now. Mytle D down to 14 hit points. He gets taken down as well, but that's from Lulu1000. He's all the way out south. The M249 is out of the game. Mytle D loses his life. Most of Team 11, though, have just been shredded. And Wizard Hat seems to be the only surviving member. ITTF has spotted him around the side and will be hunting to an extent. Wiz has heard the footsteps. This is going to be a 1v1 by the looks of things unless we have more people from Squad 14. He's very close to Pippi Shroud as well. Spots him and Pippi Shroud may be giving Wizard Hat a little bit of a lease of life here. Because suddenly a completely different squad has come in and helped Squad 11 out. Wuz is going to be feeling... A little bit relieved here, but he must be wondering what's going on. A completely different squad. He will know in the kill feed that someone from squad 14 just went down. So I'm sure he'll realize it's a third party. He's just not 100% sure from where he sees him now, though. Pippi Shroud doing that 29. Wizard Hat finishes off Pip Shroud. That's it for him. Team 14 now struggling to hold on to the observatory. The M249 is gone. Out of the game. Mighty has been has been killed still have one or two people north of the bridge not yet on Sosnovka island we still have nine minutes before the circle completely closes but by that point to be honest a lot more people will have died it looks like this game is going to progress rather quickly indeed was it hat now next to the wizard tower this is the wizard tower we're going full meta and here comes squad one we didn't hear very much from them earlier they've been pretty chill also very close to both Squad 9 and Woos. Zero kills between them at the moment. But a good position. And Zixel Zero hasn't spotted Squad 1 yet. Oh, has seen, squ has seen Wizard through the window. This could be problematic. Woos moving close to the window to prevent Zixel Zero from having an angle on him. And the gunshots have actually provoked fire from elsewhere. Squad, uh, squad 1, I think. Oh my goodness, Woz with the meta play. As soon as the frag went in, Woz went out. And uh, Woz is going to be able to seek refuge on the top floor after getting another kill. Nice move there from Squad 11. Woz, their only hope though, to remain alive. Squad 1 being very cheeky now. VSS, a very special sniper. That's not actually what it stands for, but that's what I like to pretend it stands for. Absolutely going ham on Squad 9. I don't think they actually saw where he was shooting from as well. Well, they spotted him anyway because he's out in the open. One more crate getting dropped on top of the observatory, encouraging the rest of the players to converge on this position. Squad 9 now eliminated. Squad 1 doing the job there. Andre getting the last kill onto Usamac. A nice headshot with the silenced M4. He gets taken out in response, though, by Wuz. Everyone underestimates the Wuz. In the Wizard Tower, just kind of chilling out. Wanting to see if anyone's coming around to resurrect. No one here at the moment. Six kills right now. And we are out. Uh, we've got eight teams left. I believe we started this game with 89 players. We're down to 15. AKM Scar L seems to just be kind of chilling north of the uh, north of the harbor. North of the river, if you like. The water between Sosnovka Island and the mainland, Irangel. He's going to find out very soon. That uh, that's not going to be very healthy for him. An M249 with a tax stock. Because the random extra item in the crate is always super important. And if you're wondering why this looks a little bit different from normal, by the way, we are playing all of our games today on the new remastered Irangel. Uh, so all of our custom games today are on the PUBG test server. And we're inviting as many people to join as you want. And hopefully you guys will enjoy it as much as I do. The textures and just the way this map looks is phenomenal, and I'm very happy to see this rolled out. I can't wait to see this rolled out ASAP. We are testing it at the moment, so if anyone finds any bugs, make sure to let me know. Team 2, Coldy and Katie Terry. I like it. Uh, Coldy and Katie being a very, very sneaky snake there, eyeing up Cassie and Fury from Squad 10 and opting not to shoot. Using them at the moment. 
as the Canaries going down the coal mine. They want to know if anyone else is there as well. And here comes AKM Scarl deciding, actually, it might be a good idea to start rotating in now. Sometimes rotating in late to a King of the Hill circle makes sense. Because if everyone else is busy fighting, you can come in in third party. I don't know what's going to happen with AKM Scarl. He has got to at least two teammates on the south side of the circle, so logic would suggest he meets up with them. He has been split them from uh, split from them for the majority of the game, though, so it's not entirely clear just yet. There we go. Yeah, he's going to be able to get on top of the hill where Cassie and Fury are with minimal issues. Holdy and Casey Terry will be able to see that the two have become three. Frodo Shagan spots him from up top, though. Takes enough return fire that he's going to have to heal. Uh, Frodo, remember, is teammate of Mighty, who did get that M249 earlier on in the game. We're on board now with Toshino. Still three members of Squad 1 alive. They had zero kills. They now have three. They're moving significantly further into the zone. And they are very close to center. Now, Squad 14 is still on top of them. They need to find a way to eliminate the high ground advantage. They're doing that by very slowly moving up. He's actually got a flare gun by his side as well. Wouldn't that be amusing? Frodo on the opposite side. He needs to sort of rotate south if he wants to spot them. But it looks like Andre is going to be able to get all the way up. I fear this might end up spelling the end for Frodo Shaggin. Frodo's looking for Toshino, who's right below him. Oh, I feel like Andre and Kor could move straight up. They don't realize that it's just a solo, but they, they actually have the freedom to move straight up right now. Let's see if they end up choosing to do so very close to him now. Oh my goodness, spotting Andre right out in the open. A massive surprise for both of those players, and that is going to be the end of Frodo Shagan. Squad 1 are now closest to King of the Hill. Squad 14, a commendable effort over quite a long time as well. But unfortunately, they will bow out of this game in 7th place. You can see the circle shrinking closer to Military Island only now. And soon, the entirety of Erangel, the main island of Erangel anyway, uh, will be entirely submerged in the blue zone. And based on the people talking in chat... I can see who's alive and who's dead five minutes into the future, which is a little bit weird. Fury goes down to Katie Terry. Coldy coming in against AKM Scarl, trying to finish. Cassie moving straight onto the rock next to him. Great pre-firing from Coldy, but Cassie's right behind him. We'll get the finish as well. Where's Katie Terry? There's only one person left alive at the moment. Cassie, the only member up for Squad 10. Team 2 has Katie Terry as the last surviving member. Not 100% sure who they're shooting at, but it's not Cassie. Ooh, and Calypso. Third partying. and So Katie Terry was obviously shooting squad 1. Who were on top of the observatory. Squad 17 with a beautiful third party there. Clinical. And that's the problem. Everyone's converging on one position. Which means you're suddenly going to have to play this like it's Sano. And there's going to be, what, 20 different teams popping in at any one time. So a very tricky situation for these guys to be in. This is King of the Hill, ladies and gentlemen. There's only one blue zone phase. Uh, in two minutes, the blue zone will have fully shrunk here. And you cannot go into the blue zone because you die instantly. It's a beautiful custom game. I developed over with the guys at PUBG Reddit who are helping me host this game. And I'm uh, very pleased to be able to help bring this to you as a PUBG partner through uh, the beautiful remastered Erangle. You can see all of the textures look quite different to what you are used to seeing. And uh, it's absolutely beautiful. Absolutely. I feel like they haven't just gone and redone the textures. I, I think the the PUBG team 
have sort of uh, moved around and sort of made minor improvements to the maps as well. All sorts of things have changed. It's not just the textures, but it is absolutely beautiful to play on. There is no doubt about that. Nine teams left. I'm very impressed that I haven't spotted, at least on Observer, I haven't spotted a single person die to the blue zone yet. It's like people oh, read the instructions. Yeah. Free Steely, though, is going to be very close. Azimov, thank you very much for the follow. If this blue zone touches him, he dies. Has he read the game mode? I don't think he's read the game mode. Oh, he's so close. Squad 16, you have to hurry up. You are making me very, very nervous indeed. No! What are you doing? Well, Free Steely is going to be the first person captured on film. Unfortunately, dying to the blue zone. Ladies and gentlemen, remember, read the instructions. Unfortunately, Lizzie is going to find that the road up to Observatory is a difficult one indeed. The blue zone behind him, or her, will kill them instantly. Down to 24 HP, and that's from top of the Observatory. If he's able to heal... Cassie says no to that, though. Calypso actually getting the finish there. Cassie with a big spray, but not able to get the critical bullet to land. And wow. Cassie is basically on the spot where this circle is going to collapse to in five minutes. Okay, so here's what happens now, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone outside of the blue zone is dead. And in five minutes time, the circle collapses roughly to where Cassie is. And that's it. The blue zone kills you instantly. Absolutely beautiful. Seven people left alive across four teams. We have team 10, 17, 11, and 1. Team 1 has been king of the hill for the last, ooh, I'd say between 5 and 10 minutes. They're taking the mantle from team 14, who did get the M249 in the first crate on the circle, but did not have the longevity, unfortunately, to uh, see it through to the end of the game. Still very much open who wins. Cassie technically in the best position, but she is a single player. Wizard Hat, also a solo. Reasonably close to her, but with no line of sight at the moment. Calypso and Lulu, Team 17, a duo. And Team 1 have the numbers advantage. Three of their team are still alive, but they have to go down the mountain in order for them to win this game. I don't think these guys are particularly incentivized to move very much right now. Speculative frag grenade coming out from Cassie onto team one. Actually quite good. Managing to land very close to that crate. Toshino, though, is behind her. And uh, we one might worry, oh dear, that she might get third party by people hearing the gunshot. Toshino sees Woz. Woz sees Cassie. Woz gets taken out. Toshino up to... Oh my goodness. Was that a... Wait, that's a flare gun drop as well on the edge of the zone. If we go to where Woz died, that's a flare drop, right? Where is it? Was that an armored Uaz? That's an armored Uaz. There. <laughs> so someone used a flare gun to drop an armored Uaz just outside the zone. As Cassie dies, leaving us with two teams. Just outside the zone. And uh, unfortunately, you can't get in. Because one second in the blue zone and you're dead. So we're down to two teams now. It's going to be Team 1 versus Team 17. King of the Hill, if they don't kill each other next two and a half minutes, the Blue Zone will just move down and collapse onto the... Ooh, Lulu gets spotted by Andre. Did Andre see her? I don't think Andre saw Lulu. Great frag grenade from Calypso. That was from a completely different direction. That's going to spook Andre into going back up. Very close to killing Lulu there. Calypso arguably saving their teammate. Toshino and Core a little bit further back. We think Squad 17 have to rotate a little bit sideways in order for them to get to a position where they can spot them. Toshino, though, moving down, trying to be a bit more aggressive. Spots the squad. He's going to be radioing that in to the rest of his teammates. Andre now significantly more confident that an underhand grenade will actually do some damage here. Close to Lulu, not getting it. Calypso getting a beautiful frag onto Toshino. He was already quite low health. Calypso was able to come around the side as well. He might be able to see some of his teammates. He does indeed. Spots Gilly. That's Andre. More frag grenades. Can Team 17 do it? They do not have the high ground. <gasps> Beautifully cooked grenade. Andre goes down and suddenly Kor is the only player left. Is he going to risk going to revive Andre? Or are we going to see more grenades finish off the rest of Team 1? Absolutely astounding work. 
Smoke Grenade goes off core, trying to get Andre into cover so that he can move out. Calypso very close to core, though, really pushing in. Toshino gets finished off. There's core. There's Calypso. This is the last fight of the match. The match is over, and Squad 17, Calypso managed to take the victory off of Squad 1, who were king of the hill for so unbelievably long. I think they were there for 10, 15 minutes, but the final fight was won by Squad 17, who came up from below. Congratulations to Calypso, Lulu, and Nyx. With eight kills between them, they will share the spoils in first place. Toshino, Andre, and Kor take second, and Cassie Fury and AKM Scarl are in third. Commiserations to everyone else. What a fantastic game number one.